One of my favorite categories of cars is original and unrestored. And sometimes I'll buy a car just because it is original and unrestored. I'm not really looking for one, but it's so nice. Oh, you have to have it. A classic example of that would be this. This is the 1967 Chrysler Imperial. One day I got a call from a guy in Beverly Hills, a movie producer, 93 years old. And he said, Jay, I got a car for you. They, I, I can't drive anymore. I shouldn't be driving. I want to sell it. I said, what is it? He said, it's a 1967 Chrysler Imperial. I bought it brand new. He said, uh, twice a month, a man from Chrysler would come to his home in Beverly Hills, beautiful home, and uh, service the car at his house. And he goes, my Chrysler guy is turning 70. He wants to retire. I'm too old to drive. You want the car to go to a good home. I said, you know, I'm not really looking for a 67 Chrysler Imperial. Well, just come over and look at it. So I go over to the guy's house, and it's just like you'd expect. It's on Sunset Boulevard. It's set back from the road. It's got a long driveway, beautiful home. Uh, he comes out to meet me. He's got a smoking jacket with the patches. He's got a big ascot on. He looks like what you'd think a movie producer would look like. 93 years old, got the gray hair. He says, come on in the garage, let me show you my car. And this is the car. And <laughs> it's perfect. It's like a brand new 1967 Chrysler Imperial. And then he said something that really just kind of blew me away. He said, what I did when I bought this car, I was so afraid I might have an accident or damage it that I bought spares, I bought two of everything. And we opened the other side of the garage door and there's two of everything. Brand new bumper, old stock, brand new lights, old stock, hubcaps, trim pieces, electric motors. He, he spent almost the equal value of the car buying all these parts in case anything broke. And he drove this car for, well, since 1967 and it had 144,000 miles on it. Come on, let's take a look. You know, they don't make cars like this anymore. Uh, this is a classic example of the final days of old technology. It's a big Chrysler 440. It's got the old cast iron torque flight three-speed transmission, virtually bulletproof, carbureted, uh, fast, comfortable. It's a really nice driving car, full leather interior. These felt inserts are a little goofy. Electric everything, electric windows. You've got all kinds of cool storage places here. Um, electric side vent windows here. You got the wood trim, electric door locks. Um, most cars have that stuff now, but back in the day, that was pretty rare. The coolest thing about this car is the thin A-pillar. You know, so many cars now, because of rollover protection and whatnot, have these big, thick A-pillars, you have these blind spots, whereas this car is panoramic. When you drive it, it's like you, oh my God, it's like you're just out in the open. And it's big, it's enormous, it doesn't get very good gas mileage, but geez, it's a great driving car. Come on, let's look under the hood. As I said, it's a Chrysler uh, 440. As you can see, it's all stock. We haven't uh, done any performance upgrades or anything to it. First year of the dual brake uh, system, I put a new master cylinder on it, upgraded the brakes just a little bit, although all stock. Uh, well, actually, we did the whole motor, bottom end, pistons, everything, because 144,000 miles, it was still running nicely, but a little smoky. Um, the cool thing about this car, it has dual air conditioners, front and back. And on the hottest day, you get in, you throw both those switches, and the air is blown from, and you're freezing in like a minute and a half. It's hilarious. You can hang meat in this car. And it has some cool features like this here. Let me show you something here. See, when someone needs to get in the back seat, you just Push this forward and as you can see it automatically moves. I didn't even know that feature was in this car until I got it home and I moved the seat one day. Carpets. Now see, that's a trunk. <laughs> Look at this, full size spare. The trunk actually holds a family of five. In fact, on weekends I rent the trunk out as a studio apartment. The chrome gas goes here and it takes a lot of gas. This is what you call a hybrid. It runs on gas. Then when we got on the freeway, it uses even more gas. You got your uh, half vinyl top. They did this on the Crown Coupes. This was the top of the line model. In fact, they even had an office option, which had a passenger seat that turned around and faced the back with a folding table and a dictation machine and all this kind of stupid stuff from the, from the 60s. Uh, the translucent steering wheel, which I love. That's adjustable. There you go. See, as you can see, uh, and you got your automatic headlamp dimmers and all that stuff. But as I say, this is just the last days of the old school stuff. 
big carbureted V8, quiet, smooth, fast. Uh, this was a car more than equal to the Mercedes. And you know, when you bought a Mercedes Benz in 1967, you got a beautiful car, but it was a six cylinder. This was a huge V8 with dual air conditioning front and back. Uh, Mercedes of the 60s had the add-on air conditioner because air conditioning was not a big deal in Europe. So this was really uh, a world-class beating car. I think it's as quiet and certainly faster than a Rolls-Royce. This is the exact opposite of the McLaren or any sports car. There is absolutely no road feel at all. You drive this car with one finger, you touch the brake very lightly with your foot, yeah, <laughs> there's no road feel at all. And uh, a little bit of tire squeal too. But this, this car is the epitome of the boulevard ride. Just on a long trip, there's nothing like it. If you go to Vegas, you put everybody you know in the car with you and you drive quickly and smoothly in. Well, come on, let's go for a spin. Electric, of course. I love these. Pulling away effortless. Back in the day, back in the 60s, certainly the 50s, Chrysler was the engineering company. Uh, somehow I've wound up with uh, three Imperials. I've got the 34 Airflow, uh, the 56 Imperial, and, and this one. Uh, like I said, I wasn't looking for them. They just kind of show up. And when you see something like this, original underscore, <laughs> you have to buy it. It's just a boat. But then I like boating. You know, if you worked at a factory, this is what the boss drove. I like how the sun bounces off the translucent steering wheel. I just like how it has power everything. Just touch the steering wheel, just touch the brake, just touch the gas, and you go. Seat belts became mandatory in 1966, and all cars had them from that point on. Of course, this being a 67, it was tough to get people to wear seat belts back in the day. I remember my dad and I went to look at a new car in 1966. My dad wound up buying a Ford Galaxy 5, a Ford Galaxy 7 liter with a 428. But I remember we, my dad asked the, uh, Sales about seatbelts. He says, hey, is a car with seatbelts? And the guy said, seatbelts? Hey, Louie, we got a guy here who thinks he's going to Indianapolis 500. What, are you a race car driver? You need seatbelts? Just humiliated my dad. And then when we got the car, the guy showed us how if you moved the seat forward and rolled up the seatbelt and stuck it in the crack, the seatbelt would disappear. You could just leave it there until you sold the car. You know, yeah, I mean, why would you want to put that on? It doesn't make any sense. You know, some of the newer cars, like new BMWs, they hide the radio and stuff behind paneling. Well, Chrysler was doing that back in 67. You see, you flip up that piece of wood, there's your radio, your electric antenna. You know what's great about this car? You have four cigarette lighters. Every passenger has his own cigarette lighter and ashtray. You could literally drive yourself to the cemetery in this car. You have your Sentinel, which uh, puts your lights on automatically for you. Something else that's kind of cool about these cars is the turn signals are outboard they're on the end of the fenders you have the gun sight emblem right there in the center of the hood a lot of work went into these this was about a sixty five hundred dollar seven thousand dollar car back in the day which was a lot of money it's not really a pretty car it's more like a handsome car it's like a man's car you're like a captain of industry that's what you drive imperials never sold in the numbers that cadillac did and probably even less than lincoln but uh, a lot of people feel they were a superior car certainly back in the day why would you want to put mag wheels or some kind of big dubs on this thing when you have this beautifully ornate hubcap? Look how much work went into those things. You know, when I was in high school, the big thing was somebody would borrow their old man's Chrysler, you'd go to the parking lot of the shopping center, you put it in neutral, you'd floor it, drop it in gear, and ah, just burn rubber all day long. Because these old cast iron torque flights, they could take a beat. This was probably one of the greatest transmissions ever. It, they used it in the Hemi, they used it in the 404, they used it in the 383. Pretty much bulletproof. And no, I'm not going to put it in neutral and drop it in gear because this is my car. But if you step on it from a rolling start, it still goes pretty good. We left the camera car in the dust. Right after this car was built, late 60s, early 70s, then you came in with the emission controls, the smog pumps, they lost power, they didn't run as well. Uh, this was sort of the, uh, as I mentioned before, the last days of the old technology. Just as dependable as a carbureted car could be, fantastic. 
I've got a board meeting I gotta get to and I wanna make a good impression, so I'm gonna go show up in my Imperial. See you later.